you suspect that your mindset when you were in denial telling yourself this just is not part of my life i'm not destined to go to prison this was not yeah, in your cards makes, denial makes you feel better it provides some moments of solace but longer term it's a recipe for disaster and i didn't recognize that at the time it's okay it's denial go down this road i didn't do it and it felt good but as i just mentioned it was longer term it was it ended up horrifically what happens in your experience when you've got a group here of 50, but they're not a group? They're going to be tried individually. When some of them plead out, the deal they make probably involves some time in prison. They're going to prison. I think all of them. What does that mean for those that make deals later? If the early people made deals that included prison time, there's no way those that come after them can do it without prison. That's correct. Those who accept responsibility later in the process, the government will justify a longer prison term at sentence in part because they'll say, Your Honor, we've had to spend X amount of government resources. This defendant delayed the inevitable. So as I've written and coached our clients, if you've done it, don't walk but run to the U.S. Attorney's Office to take a deal because the fewer resources they have invested in you, the better. The question is, do they view their actions as criminal, and are they willing to acknowledge that they made these bad decisions and begin to endure the lifelong stigma of being a convicted felon? And frankly, federal prison, Dr. Phil, can be the easiest part of the sanction. It's all the accompanying problems that follow. And for some, it's just too much to bear. I've had clients who were lawyers who said, I broke the law, but I've got to go to trial because if I lose my law license, I'll never earn another penny. I'll say, that's not true. And I can point them to many, many people who have lost their licenses and been incredibly successful as a result of the conviction. So sometimes they're too short-sighted. I'm going to lose my license. I'm going to read my name on the cover of the New York or Los Angeles Times. I can't do it. And they're not thinking three, five, ten years ahead and then working their way back and assessing what they would like their life to look like. I think old sayings get to be old sayings because they're profound. Yes. Like stitch in time saves nine. It's been around for generations because it just fits generation after generation. And that old saying, first loss, best loss, mm -hmm. you're saying get in there early before A, you've pissed them off, B, they've spent hours and hours and hours of having to prepare this case. Yes. Now you want to come in and make a deal, and they're sitting there saying, I offered you a deal before you made me work weekends, before you made us spend all this time, money, and effort. Now you want a better deal than the person that came in here and pled out nine months ago? No way, Jack. It's illogical that yeah. the government would respond It's just illogical. Way. Correct. You're seeing that when the government is sending target letters to adult children who might have been a part of this case, you can bet those letters are primarily going to parents in this case who have yet to plead guilty. And yeah, those a, are leverage letters. It's a wonderful tool to use. These parents go from worrying about their child's reputation and legacy to their freedom and imprisonment. It changes the game. I suspect as a result of that tactic, you'll see more guilty pleas, including yeah. hopefully not indicting. But if it goes on long enough, you can fully expect the government to follow through on these letters and indict children, and it changes everything. Yeah, because they don't have to bluff. No. I mean, they have the resources. Endless resources. Good. Just this week, Freedom, what was the last headline that we saw? I think it was April 17th. This was in DailyMail.com exclusive. Lori Laughlin's daughter is under criminal investigation in college admission scandal with prosecutors launching probe to see what she knew about her parents' faux crew coup. They're saying, okay, she took a picture on a rowing machine, and she got in as a crew member. Yes. So they're saying, all right, looks to me like she knew something about it. So they've sent a letter to her. Now they've upped the game. That's all it takes, Dr. Phil. If that turns out to be true, she participated in a conspiracy to break the law, and people have gone to prison for less. I know because I served time in prison with people who have served time for less. She would be just as culpable as her parents. That's right. She may get a different outcome because of her role and many, many things that factor into it. She wasn't on the recordings. She wasn't on the recording, things like that. But whether it's three months for her or probation for her or a year and a day, the felony conviction is so utterly devastating. Now, maybe different in some of these cases if there are such massive resources where it may never matter. But still, there are inconveniences once you get into the wheels of the criminal justice system. Probation, home confinement, imprisonment, 
the stigma that accompanies it, and spending years or decades to work to get your good name back. I once mistakenly wrote that I had arrived. We've never arrived. We're works in progress. And I know for me, it will take the rest of my life to fully make amends for my bad choices. Listen, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't mean to brag, but I'm not. <laughs> but I've really been surprised that they haven't gone after the kids more in this yet because at absolute minimum, they have taken the benefit of the transaction, Mm -hmm. which is conversion. That's right. It's like the parents robbed the bank and gave the money to the child and the child spends the money. That's conversion. They got the benefit of the crime. That's right. They've eaten from the poison tree. Yep. I'm really surprised that they haven't gone after more of the kids, isn't that likely the next strategic way for those that don't plead? Without question. Uh, That is the next best strategy for the government to get more guilty pleas, to help those, in this case, recognize that we view what you did as criminal. You're not recognizing that there are victims here, and you're focused on yourself and how you think you have been wronged and how your own life is imploding. And we have endless resources and are willing to go to a jury to tell a different story, to tell Mm -hmm. a different narrative. And they will continue to use those resources, including indicting children. And then at some point, if that were to happen, most of them will accept responsibility. In some cases, they could spend millions of dollars in legal fees. I've had defendants call me and say, well, I've known of your work for two years, but I I was always going to go to trial. And they've spent $2 million in legal fees. And then on the eve of trial, they plead guilty. And then they all end up saying the same thing. Man, I wish I got here two years ago. I've been in jail this whole time. I'm just not getting credit for it. All of these defendants, Phil, we have to understand, are already in prison. They're just not getting credit for time served. And that's why it's sentencing. It's easier because you can begin to plan.